Hi folks, welcome to the video. We're doing another ninja swipe. I could not wait to do another ninja swipe. This is gloss gel and I have some more table scrapings and we're gonna talk about that in a second. It's this beautiful shade of light green. I am using the same colors from my original ninja swipe, the yellow, which is the Amsterdam Naples Yellow Deep, the Pebeo Iridescent Blue Red, Amsterdam Olive Deep, and the final one is Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue. Okay, so this tool is what I used on the first Ninja Swipe for, for the first few flicks of the it has a skinnier side um, and, a, and a slightly thicker side, but even the skinny side I feel was too thick for me and the tool itself was overall too heavy and not flexible. So for the other Ninja Swipe I did, I quickly changed over to one of those two palette knives. I can't remember exactly which one I used. And that worked okay, although it did cause me to, or I caused me to, scrape really close down to the canvas. Now I found in my tools this plastic palette knife, but it's extremely flexible, and, and I'm hoping that this will do a better job. So here we go. I am putting down my base. Uh, while I do this, I want to just talk about this base. It's another um table scrapings i absolutely love the shade i'm sure a good amount of this is windsor newton pale olive <clears throat> but it is table scraping so it likely could be a lot of different greens that just came together so the table scraping bucket the slot bucket was separating very quickly and very within like a few hours not like a few weeks so that made me feel it needed more binders and it also was thinner than I wanted it to be so you saw me in the beginning show you the gel gloss what I did was I took a little bit of gel gloss and bit by bit I took table scrapings out of the slop bucket added it to the gel gloss until I had um, a thicker mixture and also doing that adds some more binders back into it so hopefully it wouldn't continue to separate as quickly and one of the reasons i did that be is because in the other ninja swipe we did for nate's art lab you may have noticed that the final results of the piece the blue background table scrapings had a lot of spots in it that were darker that almost looked like oil like oily sort of like if you spill olive oil on something and you've cleaned it but it's just not gone and now you still have that oil stain and just makes it look darker well that's what I felt that the background I saw a lot of that in the background of that piece and I thought perhaps that table scraping could have used some additional binders as well so because this already was a little thinner than i wanted it and it was separating so quickly i decided it needed a little it needed a little editing so i mixed up a bunch of this with some gel gloss and it did get better and, and i noticed that when i walked away closed it up came back a few hours later, it had not separated like it was doing before. So that was good. I have some more of this color left and I'm sure you will be seeing it again because I love this color green. So the laying of this base coat for this piece was a labor. Um, I've sped some of it up, not all of it. I spent a lot of time um, putting down this base coat and unfortunately it just didn't get put down very perfectly as you'll see in the end but there were so many bubbles I torched this thing 
a million times. The base got torched multiple times. I would let it sit, try to get more bubbles to come up, torch it again. And then of course the ninja swipe technique itself adds air and bubbles to your piece. So after I ninja swipe, I am do a whole lot more <laughs> torching than do. So this time around, I remembered that I wanted to have my three puddles layered differently from each other. I had wanted to do that on the first piece, but forgot to do it as I was layering, layering the puddles. This time I remembered. So I'm still putting down three puddles. I'm starting off trying to make the puddles a little smaller than the last time. Ultimately, I don't end up really getting them to be that much smaller. The paint is thick and there's four different colors I'm laying down. It just, it just didn't get to be that much smaller. But at any rate, I did in fact lay three puddles and each puddle was layered in a different order. So I was hoping that would give me slightly different results with each flick, you know, in each different puddle. What I did not remember to do, which I did on the first piece, was to put a small puddle of base under my puddle of colors. And I did not remember to do that. And I thought, well, I, need, I needed some buffer. The reason for that puddle was to give some buffer for this flicking. And so instead, so what I ended up doing was putting some base around my puddles as opposed to putting them under it and a little bit I end up regretting that um and it and in terms of what happened the last time if you've seen the video the end result actually came out pretty nice even though I had some big piece pieces of canvas that were blank that I had fully scraped paint off of I was able to put edit the paint back in it and you almost can't tell. In fact, if you don't look at the piece for a while, you might not remember where those big holes were and, and notice it. The puddles of base around the puddles of color did not work out great in this piece. You'll see when we get to the dry results, <clears throat> the piece itself is fantastic in terms of color and composition and I love it but these puddles that I'm putting down right now I end up regretting because they never flatten out and so I have big bulbous dry puddles at the end at the bottom of my piece so we'll talk about that later in the try results I have some ideas about what I'm might try to do because overall I ended up liking the piece so here we go I'm putting this you know tragic um, additional paint around the puddles and I'm about to get going with um, my ninja swiping so I'm going to use that lighter thinner more flexible um, palette knife I'm trying flicking and you know didn't work. So I'm going back to my original movement that I did in the last painting where I just try to get up underneath it and go up and out and just flick the paint. You can see in the distance there at the top of the screen, I have a little shield and I was hoping that shield would be a good helpful thing however you're gonna see here well you don't see it but you see me see it um, in a minute that it didn't go well I got a little unicorn twisty there I was so excited about that so just to talk a little bit about <clears throat> what I'm trying to achieve with this and I know that not everybody wants to do it this way so now I'm looking behind the shield and I have discovered that in fact, that last swipe 
went over the shield and dropped droplets on another piece behind the shield, which was wet and which was dark. It was not anything close to these colors. So I fixed that. It's in one of the Midnight Series videos. You can go back and see that if you want. What I'm trying to accomplish with these swipes is the look of obviously like a spring garden, obviously a very abstract spring garden. But the reason I, I want the puddles, the bottoms of the puddles to be still showing at the bottoms of the canvas as opposed to tilting it all back over the bottom edge is I want it to look almost like if my plants with their with their root bulbs were floating over the top of the ground like if you could see through the ground and see the plants with their root bulbs and then everything from the bottom up to the beautiful flowers and so I want to get that sort of effect where we're seeing it from the top to the bottom um, and I'm gonna keep working on that and I'm just not always achieving that um, I think I achieved that um, with the swipes I did on this piece what I didn't achieve it with or what what ruined that achievement in my mind were these big bulbous puddles at the bottom that didn't dry flat. So, but in terms of my swipes, despite the fact that I, I nearly ruined a painting behind the shield, I like the, you know, composition and the, the negative space and the very light top portion of this painting, um, and how it all, it all worked out. Um, I just have to dial in my technique for the bottom pieces. Some ideas I had for the next one, because there will be a next one, because I just love doing this, which is ironic because I don't generally feel very comfortable with things that I can't control, <laughs> but this I like. Some ideas I have, um would be to try to work with thinner paint. Um, I've worked with very thick paint for these just because again, the whole control issue, the fact that I don't feel super comfortable not knowing what's going to happen if the paint just gets way away from me. Um, and that's because I didn't do well with a yeet pour once and, um, it was just a disaster and because half the paint went up, you know, it was like I overshot the whole canvas. Like I didn't even get it on the canvas. It was on the floor be beyond the canvas. So because the paints were thinner and so these paints, I purposely started out with them probably thicker than what most people would use so that I had a little more control. So I will try to try to work with thinner paints and see if that helps in terms of other options. I'm thinking perhaps using a launch pad style rather than having my puddles on the actual painting, the finished painting. So that's another one I might be trying. So again, you'll be seeing me doing these ninjas again. So these are the wet results. There's a lot to love. There's some spots that are have holes that, hopefully we'll close up and we'll see what happens with regards to those closing up when we look at the dry results but we have some cool splatters and some cool swirlies and I really love this it does look like wild grass or it, it just it looks like wild now I know it's really terrible to shoot video this way on YouTube but I do want you to kind of see the whole piece and I absolutely love this piece it has some minor problems <laughs> that need to be fixed but overall I love it and it 
only makes me want to try again. So this will not be my last ninja swipe. I am going to perfect this to look the way that I want it. Um, I might need to try launch pad. That may be what I need to do. But obviously some of the imperfections are that the base did not get laid very nicely. It's very um, wrinkly. That's because I used the spatula. So I need to probably get more comfortable with my base being slightly thinner so that I can tilt it or blow it to make it nice and smooth. Obviously, there were several areas where the paint did not close in and cover the canvas. There's a spot right there that probably was never covered. That's probably from me spreading the base. The other problem, and this one is a little harder to fix, and I'm not even sure if I can, is all that extra paint at the bottom that I knew was too much um and it's it's like a big bubble it's it did not flatten out i i actually do not know how to fix that at all um but maybe somebody out there does um i'm open to suggestions this is the initial dry results for this piece i will touch up as much of this as i can and we'll be back with the touched up version in just a second Okay, here we are back with this round two of dry results. So I've gone in and I've filled in some spots where there was uh, missing. Um, that's still wet there because I forgot it and had to do it last minute. Um, but I've gone in and filled in some spots where I had scraped the canvas. What I haven't done yet, and that'll have to wait for, I'll show it to you in, an, in another video once I figure it out. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do down here, but I have an idea and it's just going to take me a little while to flush that idea out and get the right supplies for it. But overall, I like this piece enough to want to salvage it and figure out how to how to make it, you know, look really beautiful um, in the places where I don't think it's as good uh, because of the areas that I do love about it. And this green base I love this color green um, I'm going to do more with this it's the one lighter color that I really enjoy I I'm typically like a Prussian blue gal I really love the dark colors the sharp and the deep but this green just speaks to me so I I think you'll see this green again um, but thank you for being here and come back and paint with me again.